Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here. In this Tidy Tuesday video, we're actually not gonna be doing any code. Instead, I'm actually gonna experiment with this uh, video format and actually give you some tips for learning data science. And the first tip that I really have for you guys is to use your student discounts. So I know a lot of my viewers are college students. So you probably have a .edu um, email or at least an email going through your university. So you should be going to uh, GitHub Education and uh, you'll get the education pack. You just have to give them your uh, student email. And what's really good about this um, education pack is it comes with a lot of useful tools. So the main tool that I think is the best is probably the AWS Educate um, benefit. So you get $100 of AWS like uh, credit. And what's really cool about that is you can actually use like AWS's cloud computing through Redshift. So you get $100, $100 of essentially cloud computing using Redshift. Um, that means if you have kind of like a, a crummy laptop, like a Chromebook or something like that, and you want to do like a image neural network, you can actually do it pretty fast um, without killing your laptop. Additionally, you also get GitHub Pro. So if you actually look at my GitHub account, um, it'll show you that I have like a pro account. Um, let's see here. How do I do that? Yeah, it'll, it'll say that I'm pro. So there's no way I would actually buy the pro version. But since I'm a student, I get a GitHub Pro account. And actually, I'm not really a student. Um, I just graduated, but for some reason, I think they just give you the um, student, they still give you the Pro account for at least a year. Um, another thing that they give you is, let's see here, is there, there's a data camp. Let me look it up. Um, data camp. Oops, data camp. So they also give you data camp. So you get three months of a data camp subscription. So that's a good way to learn um, new things. Um, additionally, I was actually experiment this, experimenting with this last night and you can also get a one year domain. So if you go to, what is it, andrewcouch.me and then dash tidy Tuesday, I have kind of like this really bare bones tidy Tuesday um, page and then you can view on GitHub and then you can see my GitHub repo for the Tidy Tuesday projects. So if you have um, a, a project that you want to kind of make a website for, um, you can always use github.io, but then you can also use the student pack and get your own domain, such as like .me or dot, um, dot .technology, et cetera. Okay, so my, um, you also have, um, besides GitHub uh, education, you also have a Tableau um, subscription. So you can actually get Tableau for free while you're a student. I'm not sure how long it lasts, but you, you can use Tableau and not pay for it. You also can use the Microsoft Suite. So I'm sure a lot of everyone has the Microsoft Suite, but if you don't, um, you can go and ask your university to get the Microsoft Suite. And lastly, I think it's important to just look at your university's IT support. So I go to uh, University of Iowa, so if I do like software, um, and then I say, uh, what is it, IT, I can kind of look at the available software for the University of Iowa students and just download it. So these are very useful things. I actually got uh, Windows 10 um, for a spare computer that I, I built, so um, you never know, there's always some free things that you can get. Okay. So my next tip for learning um, or for getting into data science is it is just to find textbooks online. So many universities will just offer their uh, textbooks online for free, especially Ivy League ones. So um, one of the most uh, popular textbooks for, I guess, machine learning is the Elements of Statistical Learning. And I'm on Stanford's um, website and you can actually just download the PDF for free. So um, and there's different editions. Additionally, um, if you kind of just look at um, these books, um, you should be focusing on more applied stuff because when you look, when you have a textbook that has like applied in it or like with R or with Python, they'll generally give you like a package to actually do the hands-on assignments and learning in your uh, preferred language. So that's also a little additional tip when you're reading and finding textbooks. So my third tip for uh, getting into data science is also to just read online articles and to watch videos. So obviously I have my own videos, but there's also Khan Academy. 
um, which does a lot of like prim preliminary uh, stats. So if you are just getting statistics and probability, you can kind of look at these videos and do the exercises. Additionally, um, if you really want to get into like machine learning and um, other statistics, StatQuest is probably the um, gold standard for like good digestible videos with where you don't really need a background in statistics. I would also recommend um, other R data scientists. So Julia Silgi is a data scientist and she has a blog um, and where she kind of talks about tidy models. She actually is one of the software engineers, I think, developing tidy models. She also has a YouTube channel. Additionally, you should be looking at David Robinson. Uh, what's the R studio? Uh, David Robinson, uh, he has about me variants explained. Um, so he has a lot of good videos too. And he's the guy who inspired me to do the Tidy Tuesday project. And lastly, um, if you want to get into, uh, uh, what is it? If you want to get into uh, uh, neural networks, uh, Code Emporium is a really good channel too. He, he really um, explains how different types of neural networks work. And it's a pretty, and he has a really good channel about that type of stuff. So additionally, you should also be looking on Twitter. So what's cool about um, the Tidyverse or the R community is that they have a huge uh, R presence or presence on Twitter. So if you just look up hashtag R stats, there's always going to be talk, people talking about using R on their own projects. So there's always a lot of cool people to follow. Um, many people on the R Studio team um, are on Twitter and they're very active on Twitter. You can also look up Tidy Tuesday and you can see people's uh, kind of like how, how they looked at the uh, Tidy Tuesday data set and at what charts they made. Additionally, um, if you're looking up textbooks, you should also be looking at github.io. So these are pro these are um, users from GitHub. So Topipo, or I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Oops. Uh, to Topipo, yeah, Topipo, he is Max Kuhn who created Carrot. So he has a lot of uh, little small websites talking about um, Carrot, et cetera. So here's him kind of explaining Carrot, all the things that goes into it. I remember I did a video on interpretive machine learning and this guy basically kind of put his book onto a github.io account uh, or website and you can kind of go through it so whenever you're looking at a textbook um, in a programming language it you should always kind of look up to see if there's a github.io page for it okay and then my fourth uh, tip for getting into data science is to look at uh, lecture slides from other classes so most like Ivy level um, colleges or universities will kind of offer their actual classes slides online. So you can kind of just look at what people are learning. You can go over the slides. Um, see, here's lecture six on Bayesian estimation. You can kind of read through it. Um, additionally, um, Warren uh, School of Business has their Department of Statistics and you can kind of look at all of their classes. So like adaptive variable selection, credit modeling, et cetera. Um, and that's just a good way to learn stuff. So if you want to look up um, a lot of classes that you can't take, say if you're if you're like a psychology student and you want to learn more about, you know, computer science and machine learning, um, you probably can't take those classes at your university without prereqs. But if you can look up like, uh, what is it? Um, you can just kind of look up uh, computer science class and I think uh, Stanford has one online uh, was it in used to like YouTube uh, so there's there's definitely like uh, program methodology so CS 106a um, I think let's let's see what else does uh, MIT has a lot of classes on MIT courseware so you can learn a lot um, a lot of, you basically learn about anything so not just about uh computer science machine learning statistics so th these are always good resources to kind of look at the more like formal and more uh, academic way of learning and then lastly i would just say to start your own projects so starting your own projects and just sharing them with people so 
for example, like just start up a GitHub, um, create a bunch of repos. Um, you don't have to share all of them, but it's always nice to just kind of work on a project, kind of get into the actual weeds of it to figure out what you, what you do know and what you don't know. So a lot of times when you're kind of copying code, you, you realize that you were just copying code and didn't have an actual understanding of it. So doing your own projects where uh, there's no set um, goal or there's no set like way to do it is a good way to do things. I also would recommend just working collaboratively. So a good w uh, they're always telling people that you should always have side projects on your resume. However, it's a good way to really meet and network with other people who are in your similar position or who are interested in the same field or things that you're in is to work collaboratively on projects. Um, and lastly, I think um, just to go back on things is just to document all of your day, uh, all of your projects and also deploy your projects. So it's always nice to have a, a project that you can just view online. And one good thing is you can always use shinyapps.io if you have a shiny application or dashboard that you can put in. Um, you also have like public uh, was it public tableau where you can kind of show it to like a recruiter or a friend or a professor. So those are the main things. I'm just going to emphasize that one, you should always use your student email to find discounts on free things. Just, you should also be reading textbooks that you can always find online. You should also focus on the applied things because generally they'll come with a package to actually go through the, the textbook for you. Uh, the third tip is to basically read online articles and watch videos and also check out the R community on Twitter. And then my fourth tip is to always look for lecture slides from classes that you uh, want to take because they generally will post them online for free, especially these Ivy level classes. And then finally, always start projects, um, share them with people, work collaboratively and deploy. So I know this is kind of a quick video, but um, I've, I've been kind of busy. So I'll see you guys next week and tidy on.